chapter 14, verses 21 to 28. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord, in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Good morning, church. In the last four reflections, we've been covering the first missionary journey of Paul. When I read the accounts, of that journey, I am reminded of the points Tom, the five points Tom made in his preach. What is it like to follow Jesus? Paul's journey, and what I read in Acts 13 and 14, bring to life those five points and serve as an encouragement and inspiration to all of us. Point number one, following Jesus requires us to be active and not passive. With much prayer, fasting, and led by the Holy Spirit, Paul, along with Barnabas, decide to take the gospel message to wherever they are led. Paul actively engages the culture rather than passively waiting for people to come seeking the truth. The second point, we are going to be inconvenienced. Paul's first missionary journey lasted for over two years. He traveled over 1,500 miles, a thousand of those on foot. He preached to Gentiles, Jews, Roman officials. He preached in synagogues, marketplaces. There was much opposition and the risk of death, and yet he continued. Point number three, we are part of something indestructible. Paul knew that his message and his mission was not of human origin. Town after town, city after city, despite the persecution, death threats, and stoning, Paul continued giving the gospel message in ways that his listeners would understand. Point four, we will experience incredible things. Paul saw Jews and Gentiles come to the Lord he healed a lame man. He saw a man go blind when he opposed the gospel. And he saw a Roman governor come to the faith. And lastly, in this chapter, we see point number five, being asked to do unreasonable things. In his, This was the last leg of Paul's missionary journey. He could have returned to Antioch using the shorter and easier route via Tarsus. But instead, I believe led by the Holy Spirit, he decides to return via Lystra, the place where he was stoned and left for dead, and Iconium, the place where there was a failed attempt to mistreat and stone him. It was unreasonable to come back to these towns so soon. But Paul decided to go to these towns and verses 22 and 23 
give us three reasons why he did that. Firstly, Paul knew that new believers needed follow-up and encouragement. For Paul, sharing the gospel and bringing people to Christ was not a one-time activity. The same way as faith is not a point-in-time activity. I have decided, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior should be followed with faithful, uh, with a life of faithful obedience and that needs constant encouragement. Secondly, for Paul it was not just about individual believers and disciples but the body of Christ and he had to appoint elders who would continue the work, strengthen the disciples and make new disciples. Thirdly, Paul returned to those towns because he knew hardships, sufferings, trials, tribulations were very much part of the life he was called to. In fact, when Ananias in Acts chapter 9 is sent to restore Paul's sight back after he was struck blind on the road to Damascus, the Lord gave this message. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, their kings, and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Jesus also warned his disciples and anyone, he would, anyone who would follow him that you would face challenges, persecutions, hardships because of his name. In John chapter 16, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will face troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Paul also warned the young Timothy and the Philippian church with these words, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. We must go through many hardships before we enter the kingdom. Is not a message you want to hear on a Monday morning. But this reality is a stark reminder that we are not yet in our heavenly home where, there, where the tears will be wiped, where there will be no more death, mourning or suffering. It is our, my prayer that like Paul, we would be able to follow Jesus truly and like him at the end of our life say, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. God bless. Have a good week.